Hello brothers and sisters Christ. I wanted to do a quick video and I want to start putting out a quick video for this new year. I want to do a quick video every month where it's going to be a uh, prayer request video. That we can all put our prayer requests out. You can put your prayer requests in the comment section. Um, the Bible says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 is pray without ceasing. That's where we get that. We say you're supposed to pray without ceasing. Your prayer. We need to get back to prayer. Prayer is powerful, brother and sister Christ. Prayer is very powerful. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request, request be made known unto God. We have requests, brother and sister Christ, um, as the body of Christ. You're going to have requests, needs. Okay. James 1, 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. We pray for wisdom, but we also pray that God will open the eyes of the blind, both saved and lost. I, I pray that a lot today. Um, that God will open the eyes of the both saved and lost. Lost to salvation, saved to, at any time they start straying from the word of God, that God will open their eyes and get them back on the right track. And it starts with this guy right here, pointing at me. Okay. Uh, John 17, 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. We pray to the Lord to help us in our times of temptation. We pray to the Lord that God protects the brethren from the false converts and the wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay. Romans 1, 9 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. This is Paul talking to the church at Rome. Okay. We pray for the brethren all the time. That's what we're supposed to do, brothers and sisters of Christ. Romans 10, 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. We also pray for loved ones that are lost, that God gives them every opportunity to get saved. Prayer is very important. Okay? Prayer is powerful. It's still powerful today, just as powerful as it was in Paul's day. Right? We need to get back to praying for one another. So I want to do this video, and it's going to be a short video, and real quick, my prayer requests I'd like to throw out there, and like I said, put your prayer requests in, uh, in the description, I'm gonna, not description, um, the comment section, if I can say it right, Brother Jesus Christ, in the comment section, and then we'll have a video that throughout, throughout the month, brethren, if you get a prayer request, come to this video, put it on there for the month of January, and um, I'll look on it, and I'll make sure to make prayer requests. And we can all pray, okay? You might have a problem that a brother in Christ might be able to help you out with, okay? But you put your prayer request down, all right? But my prayer request, I've talked about this before, my knees, um, in my testimony, if you guys, it's probably been a long time, but some of you probably haven't even watched my testimony video, but I talk about how when I was in the military, um, I had a heat stroke in the military, and I had a major seizure disorder. Now, it's twofold. A, I need to take better care of myself, and the Lord's helping me today to take better care of myself. But I also, it turned, that heat stroke turned in, the next month turned into a major seizure disorder. I started having three seizures a month, and that went on for three to four years. And then it went down to two for three to eight years. Then it went down to one seizure for a couple years. It took nine years to get it where I wasn't having a seizure every month. Period. Okay. And having all those seizures, I knew as I got older and older, it would catch up to me. Now the Bible says, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. That is true. I was a very, very wicked man. And some of you were like, well, how wicked were you? I'll just say this. Paul got it wrong. He's not the chiefest of sinners. This guy right here is the chiefest of sinners. God saved a wretched, wretched man like me. He can save other men out there. Brothers and sisters in Christ... He saved you. He can save the world. Not everybody's going to get saved, but he can. Anybody can get saved. Okay, he saved me. Um, but the point is, is I can't stand for the two hours anymore. I just can't stand there and preach and teach for two hours. Uh, um, so I might still try to do outside videos that I know are going to be like 40 minutes long. But it's my knees have been hurting and my lower back's been hurting when I stand in one position. I can walk for two hours. I can walk for four hours, and I love the walk. I'm tired afterwards because I'm getting older, but I love the walk. It's just for some reason standing still in one position. My knees tend to lock up or something. It starts to hurt after about an hour. 
my lower back starts to hurt. So one of the prayers I need, Lord, uh, from from you, brothers, sisters, Christ, to the Lord, is about my my health, my knees, um, when it comes to standing in one place. And uh, so God helped me set the, this desk back up. I kept talking to him, saying, "Hey, we loved in the past. I'd do this. I can turn the scriptures with you guys. I can be more refreshed and not." like halfway through the study start hurting and getting distracted from what I'm trying to t God's trying to show me to share with you brothers and sisters in Christ. So that's the prayer that I need. A prayer, another prayer request is for my daughter. I talked about this. She's starting to try to come back into my life a little bit, but she's rejected me. She hates Christianity. She hates the Bible. Um, one time I was responding to some people online that they had questions, so I was responding to them in some emails. I was copying and pasting scripture verses to say, okay, here's the encouragement. We exhort through the scriptures um, and give advice and make sure those advice is based off the scriptures and whatnot. And I was just getting really into it and, and doing that. And then I got a ping from Facebook that my daughter had sent me a couple messages. She had some problems. And when, without even thinking, I just linked her some verses and told her, here's the solution, <laughs> you know. And boy, did I get a mouth get an earful, I'm sorry, get an earful of her yelling at me. How dare you link those scriptures to me? I don't want those scriptures linked to me. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe as you do. And you could just see the hate and the bitterness she has towards the Word of God. She's totally gone the way of the world. Uh, I had a family member tell me, see that picture, because I have a couple pictures on the wall of my daughter that's her as a little child. And that little child, he's like, that little child's gone. And I said, yeah, that little child's gone. And there was a time that I was so fearful of, because of how wicked this world is and everything, I kept praying, Lord, can we have the catching away of the body of Christ to happen before she gets to the age of accountability? Please, Lord, please, Lord, that's how bad this world is and how enticing this world is to grab people, especially the young people of today. It's really grabbing the young people and, and they're going out in the world and it's just, it's hard to reach them today. It's very hard to reach them for Jesus Christ. So if you could for me, please keep my daughter in your prayers. Um, for my relationship with her and that the understanding that some tough calls I've got to make is, is this comes first. The ministry comes first. My walk with the Lord comes first. And there's times where I'm going to have to tell her, no, I can't help you. Um, and it's tough. It's very tough, especially if it's your daughter or your son. It's very tough. Um, so please keep her in my prayers, uh, in your prayers, and she's in mine, but keep her in your prayers. For me. Um, Victoria, my mentor schnauzer, the 14th of January, the 14th of January, she goes in and she's got some problems on her face and it's basically because her teeth are going bad and she's getting old and so I'm going to take her in and see if, um, like I said, I, I want to get into the financial side. The Lord's been bless, blessing me and, and helping take care of me um, and providing food, clothing, food and raiment. Remember the Bible says with food and raiment therewith be content. And she's going to get a lot of teeth pulled. So if you could pray for that. Um, I'm here. I know I'm never alone. God's always with me. But physically, I, 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 I know it's just a pet. I know it's just a dog. But she's been a very big blessing to me here. Being by myself. Going for walks with her. And talking with the Lord. And taking her to the beach to go for walks. And talking with the Lord. And Sometimes people walk up to pet her and I can get into a conversation and I'll hand them a gospel tract. And lately a lot of them have just been refusing the gospel tracts, but I offer. Um, she's been a big blessing, but she's not going to live forever and I understand that. And she's getting old. So if you could keep her in your prayers too, for me, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and the prayer that I always have for me and for everybody that plays, pray for me that God keeps me on the straight and narrow. Um, and what it means is that I don't stray from the path. Right? If you disagree with me on something in the scriptures, by all means, I've opened the door. I got an email address. I got a P.O. box. I've told brethren that if you email me and we talk back and forth a little bit, I can get connected on Skype and we can talk face to face real time and go through the scriptures on anything that you disagree with what God has shown me. Uh, and I've never sat here and said I'm 100% right all the time. I'm not. Okay. The Lord is. His word is. I might mess up his word. I might not interpret his word properly. But his word is always correct. Am I always correct 100%? No. Am I above correction? No. 
I love accountability? No. Is it hard to be accountable to the body of Christ these days? Yeah. Uh, we're so spread out. Uh, the best physical accountability, like I said, I think the best thing for the ha for the brethren today is to start forming house churches in your area. Start coming together where you're actually physically accountable one to another. You're not a one-man show. The one-man show, God's not for it. Never has been for it. Paul's never been a one-man show. He's been by himself sometimes, but he's not a one-man show. How many times has he said, hey, bring so-and-so. Hey, I'm over here by myself. I need you to. Come on over here. Timothy and... I can't remember the other name, like Silas maybe. Come on over, I need you guys. You know, there's times where he was by himself because there's times in this life, brother, says Christ, we're going to be by ourselves in these last days. And it's going to get lonely. That's why I say Victoria is a blessing, very big blessing. Um, when I get uh, emails from the brethren, it's a big blessing. When I get packages, we'll talk about this in a second, from the brethren, I, I, it's a big blessing. It makes me feel like I'm not alone. I was really lonely that day. I guess we can get into this real quick. But the last thing for prayer requests for here, for me, uh, the power went out all night for the most part. Um, we're, we're in the season where it gets very windy. If you can see outside, it's very windy. It's uh, died down a little bit from what it was this morning. I had to go out and fix the skirt on my deck. The, out, the skirt, the wind had blew the skirt off and ripped the screws and stuff like that. And I was out there where it's sprinkling and still raining, trying to fix it if I could. And it's just a temporary fix till spring. I have to redo a lot of the woods, dry rotted down there. Um, it's an old house. Um, but it gets very windy. Trees fall in lines always every year. I went five days without power. And there was some years that it was just power just kept going off. And all, uh, it kept going out on us over and over throughout all the winter period. And we're really getting into hardcore winter starting January to February to March. So this three-month period. Um, so pray for, for me during these power outages that God can still use me. And when the power does come on, we'll try to get Bible studies out. So like I said, if you don't hear from me for a week or so, uh, or two weeks, that probably because of power outages. And, and flickering a little bit. <laughs> So those are my prayer requests, and like I said, underneath, I'm going to say it again at the very end of this video, put prayer requests underneath in the comment section, your prayer requests. Everybody should have prayer requests, and, and it's just something for us that if we just, we're sitting there and you just feel like, I, need, I want to pray for the brethren, you should always pray for the brethren in general, but if you want to pray for the brethren specifically, come to this video and look at the uh, comment section and see who all needs prayer. Okay. This, I was actually feeling really lonely that day. <laughs> I took Victoria to town because when it's raining hardcore here, it's like I'm always on lockdown during the winter. Winters are hard times for me. I know some people love their winters because it's just snow. It's snow. You get to go walk in the snow and it's great. But here the winters are raining. And if it's raining and windy and, and trees are falling and stuff like that, you stay inside. And I'm, I love the outdoors. So the winter times are hard for me. So we finally got a day with sun. And I started going into town, and I was talking to the Lord, and I felt great. But that, you know, feeling the, the, the loneliness and everything. Going to the P.O. box, I had a brother that dropped this off for me. I'll see if I can use it. I thank you so much for it. Um, it's a stick that I can hook the little camera that I'm using for my walk and talks. I'll see if I can connect it to it. If not, there might be a connection that I can connect to this that will connect to it. And basically, having to hold your arm up like this for a long time, it, it's, you're not used to it, your body's just not used to it. But if you have your arm down here, and this, it's on, the camera's on a stick, you can rest your arm against your body as you're walking and doing our walk and talks. And it's a great idea. It really is. And I thought about it, but I always kept thinking, well, you know, and I start to shake when I try to hold it up because, like I said, I'm getting old. I had that seizure disorder, so my hands start to shake. My handwriting's gotten bad, so I like to type things out. But I got this letter, and it was scary at first because I was like, I don't usually get anything. I have a P.O. box, and I hardly get anything in the P.O. box. And it said from, some, from a brother in Christ, and it just said to P.O. box. And I, lately in my P.O. box, I don't get much. So when I go to check it, half the time I got mail that doesn't belong there. It belongs to another box or the previous owner, and I have to go take it up to the front and everything. But... Um, so it didn't have my name on it. It didn't have the name of the ministry. It just said P.O. Box. It was the right P.O. Box. So I was like, is this, is this really my mail for me? So I opened it up, and here it was. It said, Hi, Philip. 
I watched your recent walk and talk and noticed that for the 30 plus minutes you were holding your camera, I know that it was a good workout for your arms, but can be very taxing, and it is. <laughs> so I felt the urge to help out with a solution. Also, this is not a Christmas gift, <laughs> exclamation point. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you, brother, uh, for at least watching the videos and listening. Whether you agree with me or not, at least watching the videos and follow along with the scriptures. I am... Uh, God bless you and continue to stand firm in the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. And he gave his name, the brother in Christ. Okay? So when I got this and I read it, I sat in the car with, my, with Victoria. We haven't even gotten to the beach yet. And I actually got a little teary-eyed because I was like, it was just one of those days I was down. Brother says Christ, we need to be praying for one another. We need fellowship. We need fellowship. But these days, people are using anything and everything to justify just breaking fellowship. When you break fellowship with a brother in Christ, and sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it is necessary, I'll say it again, but you treat it like it's, like, I hate to say it, like, like it's a nuke option. You don't nuke something, until, like, like in the old board games, you don't nuke something until it's your last resort. Of course, they taught you to have fun nuking anything and everything. No. That... Breaking fellowship with the brother in Christ is a last, 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 last resort. And what I see among the body of Christ is we've got wolves in sheep's clothing coming in and pushing the breaking fellowship to be like done on a whim. You just break fellowship on a whim. No, you're supposed to go and talk to brethren. If you've got a problem with the brother in Christ, you go and talk to him. You refusing to talk to him speaks loud words. Usually it's pride that prevents brethren from talking to one another, but also that... There's just this push among the body of Christ to just break fellowship, to break fellowship. This letter from a brother in Christ really came at the right time. I'm saying it came at the right time. And then there's times where I'm sitting here and I'll get an email from a brother in Christ. My computer's right here, out of the, out of the screen. Uh, my computer's right there. And I'll get an email from somebody asking a question or just saying, I just want you to know I'm thankful for what you do for the Lord and everything. Sometimes I'll get comments like that. It's rare, but... Praise the Lord. Um, it helps to encourage. That's why the Bible says that we are to exhort. I'm trying to look at the Bible. Exhort the brethren. We're supposed to exhort you. When you're doing right, exhort the brethren. Uh, when someone fails the Lord and they acknowledge that they failed the Lord, exhort the brethren to get back up. To deny themselves, pick up their cross daily, and get back to their walk with the Lord. Repent, forsake. And they do that. Exhort them. Great job, brother in Christ. I'm praying for you. I'm glad you got that out of your life. I'm sorry you fell in that temptation again and get you back out of your life. And the only time you get to rebuke is when someone says, I'm okay with my sin, I'm going to keep it. Then you rebuke them. But the ex exhortation is very important, brother and sister Christ. And I thank the brother for this. I'm going to see if I can get this to work and find some way to get it to work. Okay. So, and real quick, I saw this in the camera and I wondered if someone's going to ask questions. It's a headset. God blessed me that I saved up enough of my retirement to get a computer, a new computer. And this computer is not a top-of-the-line computer. I just want to say that because the top-of-the-line computer, I think they wanted close to five grand for it. I looked at that and said, Lord, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. They're like the new top-of-the-line computers. So I got this computer that has a better speed and everything. And the reason it was cheaper for me is because I didn't get a video card. It's got no video card. I don't need one. It works just fine without one. And it used to be when I would edit videos, it would take two to three times as long as the video is. So if I did an hour long study, it would take two to three hours to edit the video on my old computer. That's on its, it's on its last leg. It's about to go out the door. And I've set that up for a place to watch Bible studies from the brethren and um, whatnot. And look at news. See what's going on in the world. But this computer, with its speed and everything, whatever, however the length of the video is, that's how long it takes. And sometimes it's faster, but sometimes, like for an hour video, it'll only take an hour to edit the video. Or it'll take 40 minutes sometimes to edit the video. But for however long the video is, that's usually how long it takes to edit it, or it's a little bit faster. I don't know exactly how that works. But it has no speakers. It has no video card. It's just, I wanted it for the speed for editing for ministry work. Okay, that's what I wanted it for. And I grabbed this because the camera's here, and this is the setup I use to talk to brethren on Skype 
and on Facebook Messenger. This is what I used to talk to my daughter. So the light, I didn't know when I bought this that it had the light. So if you see the light flashing back here, someone might ask, what's that light? It's my headset. I had to buy a separate headset because this is, um, computer doesn't have a speaker or nothing. It's just I bought, I bought it bare bones. That's what I could afford, the God could afford for me. And that's what I have. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. Because uh, someone might ask, what's those flashing neon lights? Because it's different rainbow lights and everything. It's like, I didn't know the, speed, the head fit set came with lights. Um, so I got a Bible study we're going to be doing later. But one more thing before we call this off. Someone asked me a question under the comment section, and I'll answer it through this. They asked me, what do I think of the Schofield Commentary Bibles? Brothers, I've said this in the past, so I'll say it again. My two favorite Bibles that I have right here is this Bible, King James Bible. And this has a concordance in it. That's it. And if you look at it, it has no footnotes, no margin notes, no footnotes, no commentary. This is the best Bible you can get. This, I got, it's a lot bigger and wider, it's heavier, um, is a large print. Because my eyes there for a while was going bad. So I was um, getting this book, Bible and started to highlight things in this Bible. So this was helping out, but I started doing some tea. A sister in Christ had me do some tea. She suggested for your eyes, and I started doing those teas, and it started helping my eyes a little bit. So I can still stick with this book. So this is the one I use for our preaching and teaching. But when I'm sitting there trying to follow along with brethren, I pause, and I've been using this book and highlighting, starting my highlighting all over again. Um, but this book, since it's giant print, it has no footnotes. It has no commentary. It has uh, no concordance. It doesn't have room for anything except the Word of God. What Bible would I suggest? This right here. This right here. I don't really suggest commentary Bibles at all, period. Why? Because the man that does the commentary, he's going to be wrong somewhere. Okay? And you'll get... Okay? There, he's going to be wrong. Someone said, what about the people... Uh, was it uh, Peter Ruckman? I got his commentaries over there, but the Peter Ruckman reference Bible. I said Peter Ruckman was wrong in a lot of, in some of his stuff in his uh, commentary. Um, I mean, Brothers of Christ, the best Bible you can get is one that doesn't have a commentary. Why? Because then you have to actually do Second Timothy two fifteen instead of relying on everybody else to do it for you. You have to do it, and it's the best thing for you. Having a commentary is a crutch. It makes it where I can be lazy and I don't have to do the study. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of things that I highlight is from studies that I've done with the Lord privately. And a lot of it's studies from brethren that have, I'm pointing in there because that's in the other rooms where I watch my Bible studies. The Bible studies that other brethren do. Okay, and I highlight it. But I make sure to check it myself and say, okay, is this truth? Okay, is this right? Is that right? Okay, and then I'll highlight it. And I'll put in footnotes of my own because it's been tested and tried. Okay, this is truth. I can put it in here. All right? That's what you should do, brothers and sisters of Christ. I, I tell you right now, I would not recommend any reference Bible whatsoever. Just the plain King James Bible. There's some of them. This one has... Uh, there's some that are like this where they purposely make a space in the middle where you can take notes. Or they make space on the outside. But in order to do that, they shrink down the... Um, the font size and to me it gets too small so you can get some of those note-taking Bibles where it's just the King James Bible but they give you spaces to make notes and everything okay I, I really encourage those so to answer that brother Christ I wouldn't I haven't looked in I can't remember my first Bible I ever bought had a reference had footnotes had everything had the maps I kinda missed the maps I did like the maps but the maps weren't always correct you had to actually do some research and get the King James Bible that had the correct maps in the end because um, uh, they had the crossing. Some of them have the crossing of Moses in the wrong spot. Um, but I had that and I ended up giving it away to somebody that their Bible was just falling apart. I mean, it was torn. There was pages, tw sections torn out of it. It was a cheap Bible. I gave him that Bible. Okay? And I ended up getting it because I was going to get a bigger font Bible anyway. And then I ended up getting this and it was almost the same font. Maybe a little bit bigger. I think this was a little bit bigger. Just a tad. And then my eyes were getting a little bit bad again, so I bought the bigger one. So I gave it away. But my biggest thing is, is ignore the footnotes. Ignore 
the commentary because like I said it's best to start from scratch get a Bible with no commentary no footnotes and start from scratch and start writing in notes and say okay I've seen three or four brethren teach this study and here's a footnote where they compare they say this is the two scriptures when it says it is written you can write in the verse uh, address of the Old Testament where it's saying that you know you can do that yourself and when you're actually physically doing it yourself physical action helps with your memory okay helps you remember so that's my advice on that so we're gonna end this real quick because like I said it's just a short video I didn't mean for it to be this long but prayer request video I want to start doing a prayer request video every month and we desperately need to get back into praying without ceasing we need to pray for the brethren we need to pray that God opens the Word of God, gives us wisdom to, pre to read this. We need to be praying for men in ministry that God opens their eyes. Okay? Opens their eyes and shows them truth. I need that prayer. Every man in ministry needs that prayer. So, thank you for the gift, Brother Christ. Like I said, I've got an email address for the ministry. I've got a P.O. box for the ministry. And I'm willing to talk with Brethren on Skype and um, Facebook. Um, remember, Brethren... You get on there and I come I find out, hey, you're not a you believe in a different plan of salvation than that which is in the Bible, the King James Bible. I'm just gonna preach the gospel to you and move on. I'm talking about brethren. That's why I do emails first, so we can email back and forth for a little bit to ask questions, the basics. Do you believe this? What do I believe? What do you believe? Make sure we're all on the same page, that we're striving together for the for the gospel. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to thank you for watching and please, please put your prayer requests down below so I can ask, pray for you also. So I will see you in the next video.